Hello everyone and welcome to another new Schoolum video and another plug side chat. So in the last video I discussed the first key to the public charging infrastructure that I think needs to be implemented and that's DC fast charging banks at grocery stores. Um, I believe that that will have the greatest impact in terms of building up a infrastructure that would support EV adoption. However, I feel there are two other key implementations and I'll talk about the next one today and that's level two charging at hotels, motels, campgrounds, uh, national parks, trailheads, that sort of thing. Essentially the idea is anywhere where people go that they're going to be spending long amounts of time the same that they would spend when they go home. And you already see this sort of with uh, Tesla's plan to implement what they call destination chargers at various hotels, motels. The problem with the Tesla implementation is they mostly target more expensive uh, hotels and motels for the region. So a lot of the time, if you're, you're looking to travel on a budget, it's not really an option. But there are still, despite that, a surprising number of level two chargers, both uh, the Tesla proprietary plug and universal J1772 plugs across hotels and motels uh, all over the country. It's just not quite prevalent enough, especially not enough to support mass electric vehicle adoption. A friend of mine had suggested at one point, he, he thought that maybe Hotels and motels would also be a good location for DC fast chargers because people would be able to use them while traveling during the day and then guests would be able to really use them at night. The problem is, though, that uh, a lot of the services you see at hotels and motels aren't really open to people who aren't guests and you're competing for a lot of different parking spots and you really don't want someone to spend more than 30 minutes to an hour at a DC fast charger. Uh, the slower DC charger is okay, but once you get 50 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts or faster, you really don't want people to spend more than 30 minutes to an hour. Really no more than an hour should be the target uh, for taking up a DC fast charger. And that sort of ruins the convenience of driving an electric vehicle, right? With uh, hotels or motels, you're typically going to be spending the night there. And so you want to leverage the convenience of an electric vehicle as much as possible. You want to be able to wake up in the morning to a full battery. And on top of that too, it's much easier to go past 80% using level two than it is a DC fast charger. Again, the charge rate's gonna slow down no matter what that last 10 to 20% of your battery charge. So why not just not worry about it and not take up a DC fast charger for more time than is necessary? So uh, that's really the benefit of the, the level two and those implementations. One of the members in, a, in another forum was talking about when it would be possible to drive basically a non-Tesla electric vehicle across the country using only public uh, DC fast charging or CCS plugs or Chatmo plugs, I guess, by, by default as well. And the problem with that is, yeah, it implies almost a, a cannonball run sort of mentality, which I don't think most people would use when traveling across the country. When you do road trips, you do long trips like that, half the fun is driving. Otherwise, you would just fly. And, you know, unless you have someone, a driver that you're trading off with, uh, at some point in time, you're going to need to stop and sleep. And at that point in time, ironically, DC fast charging, even though in many ways, it's a superior technology to level two AC, DC fast charging becomes more of an inconvenience. So really what we're looking to do is make travel convenient, uh, make traveling to specific landmarks where you're going to spend hours at a time more convenient, 
Uh, I keep uh, referencing back to my trip to the Grand Canyon. And really, you could sort of juxtapose that with my trip to Zion, where at Zion, I was able to go to the Zion Lodge. Uh, and it's just, you know, your walking distance from many of the trailheads that you would want to hike anyway. And they have level two charging right there. It was so convenient to just plug in, go hike, come back, have lunch at the lodge and leave with a full battery. Whereas at the Grand Canyon, they do have those available with the, the Tesla destination chargers, uh, but they're, they're not quite as convenient. You go to the main visitor center of the Grand Canyon, there's nothing there. So now I don't say that was a wasted trip for me because I was able to go back to Williams, Arizona, which is another sort of scenic town and walk the town while the car was charging and sort of eat lunch and shop around and, and see the town, uh, the railroad museum, all of that. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily wasted, but had there been a level two at the Grand Canyon, I could have hooked up, went for a day hike, come back and left the Grand Canyon with a full battery, which would have taken an hour to maybe three hours off of my total trip time returning from Arizona into California. So it, it provides for really convenient travel uh, for a wide range of Americans. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of hotels and motels spread around across the country. So having these options to, like I said, just plug in and wake up in the morning with a full battery, it's, it's a huge advantage. And the other aspect of it, too, is when electric vehicles start to get more and more range, which they will, uh, within the next five to ten years, you're going to see ranges very similar to that of what you see in internal combustion engine vehicles, 350, 450, up to as much as 600 miles of range. Tesla Roadster that's being pr uh, proposed now has over 600 miles of, of quoted range at the moment. Uh, so when you have that much range, a lot of times these road trips, you're going to drive for the day. <laughs> you never use up your entire battery. Uh, you're going to stop at the places you want to stop, not worry whether the restaurant has a charger, not worry whether, uh, you know, the bathroom has a charger, not worry whether the convenience store that you stop at along the way has a charger. And when you get to your hotel or motel at the end of the day, plug in, and you wake up the next morning and you continue your trip uh, because you know 500 600 miles of range is that much range so um that's that next key implementation is we really need to focus on getting hotels and motels on board national parks state parks uh, recreation areas uh, getting them to have level two charging available for their overnight guests or uh, for their full day guests too. So uh, anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about this. I mean, this one seems like the no brainer. It seems the obvious one to do. Uh, level two charging is really cheap to implement. Uh, I mean, to, to do a wide ranging, you know, five, six, seven, eight uh, adapter heads for a single hotel, they might need to put in a dedicated circuit. But really, it's it's the cheapest by far. You know, you can you can easily put in a half dozen uh, level two chargers uh, more easily than a DC fast charging station of 50 kilowatts or above. I'd love to hear what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.